Hello and welcome to Nidharanya YouTube channel. You're watching another episode of the Game in a Nutshell series designed for explaining the board game rules. My name is Branislav Berec and in this video we're going to learn how to play Cloud Age, which is a new game from Alexander Pfister, co-designed with Arno Steinwende. And Cloud Age uses similar story cards slash legacy system as Maracaibo. However, Cloud Age is lighter than Maracaibo or Great Western Trail, and here is how it plays. To set the game up, first place these game board tiles on the table. In a two and a three player games, make sure the first tile is marked 1A. In a four player game, use the side marked as 1B. When playing Chapter 1 or Scenario 1, the next tile should be marked as 2A and the next one 3A. Only use three tiles in these scenarios. When playing any other scenario or chapter, the second, third and fourth tile must be in this ascending order, but you can use any side you want. Place this production board next to the game board tiles. Place the production markers of all players on the starting spaces of this production track and these 50 and 100 victory point markers to this space. Then in Chapter 1, Chapter 2 and Scenario 1 use this city board with the A side up. In all other chapters and scenarios use the city board with the side B up. Then take these city cards and three sleeves, shuffle those city cards and place eight of them unseen in each of these sleeves. When you're done, you can turn them face up. Then place the drawn tokens of all players next to this city board. When you play a scenario or a chapter with the city tile with the B side up, take these new growth tiles and place them in the bag. You will need it during the game. Otherwise, you can leave it in the box. Then, in the first chapter, you will not need these mission cards. In all other chapters and scenarios, Shuffle this deck and place it face down next to the game board tiles and deal one card randomly to each player. Then, if you play a campaign, take the card of the current chapter, read the text aloud and follow the instructions. If you play single scenario, you may need to use some legacy tiles and the card also determines the project cards you will use in the game. All the project cards have the number in the bottom right hand corner and in this example, in scenario 2, you will need to use all the project cards with numbers 0 to 4. So, in addition to the deck of cards with a 0 number, you may need to use the cards with numbers 1, 2, 3 and 4. Shuffle them all together and create the face down deck. If you need to use the legacy tiles, first find those tiles. Each tile has a letter on the face side. So, when setting the game up, Place these tiles on their corresponding spaces on the game board. Note that this L7 legacy tile is actually placed in between the second and third game board tile. The correct placement looks like this. You have to align these F letters. Then each player will take one airship board. And again in chapter 1, chapter 2 and in the scenario 1, use the airship board with the A side up and only use these 7 upgrades and arrange them from the lowest victory point number to the highest victory point number. In all other chapters and scenarios, use the airship with this B side up, and also use these three additional upgrades, again arranged from the upgrade with the lowest number of victory points to the upgrade with the highest number of victory points. Then, regardless of the side you use, place this energy marker on the space number 2, Place the victory point markers on the zero space of the scoring track and all the airships on the starting space on the game board. Then, in the first chapter and in the first scenario, each player starts the game with two water resources and two metal resources. And in two and a three player game, place seven cubes on the airship arranged like this, so leave the leftmost space empty and in a four player game only use six cubes. In any other chapter or scenario, each player will randomly draw two new growth tiles from the bag, in addition to those two water and metal resources. And in a four player game, use seven cubes on the airship, leaving the leftmost space empty. And in a two and a three player games, 
use all eight cubes. And finally, again in chapter one and scenario one, draw five project cards and keep them in your hand hidden from other players. In any other chapter or scenario, draw eight cards in total, choose five to keep and three cards will be discarded to the discard pile. Keep the discard pile somewhere next to the draw deck. If you don't play the first chapter or scenario, remember each player should have one mission card. And as the ultimate step of the setup, each player takes their own navigation cards in the same color as their airship, shuffles the deck and places the deck face down next to the airship board. The game is played from 6 to 8 rounds depending on the number of cubes you have on your airship. Each round consists of three phases and they are also depicted on your airship board. First one is the production phase, in which players will generate some water and maybe victory points based on the position of their production markers. And they will draw two cards from their navigation deck and one of them will be used for the movement and the other will generate either project cards or energy. Then in the movement phase you will move your ship on the game board, you will collect some resources along the way and you can also fight militia in the cities and gain additional rewards. And finally during the action phase you will use this city board and you have three options, you will either collect even more resources or you can use the build action or plant action. With the build action you can build upgrades on your ship, you can build one of your project cards and with the plant action you may plant these new growth tiles. At the end of the round when you place the last cube on the game board tile the game will be over and the player with the most victory points is the winner. You will gain the victory points from your mission cards, from the project cards you play, from the upgrades on your airship and also for winning the combats in cities. The first phase, production phase, can be actually played simultaneously. It has three steps. In the first step you move the first player marker to the next player in a clockwise direction, however you skip this step in the first round of the game. In the first round of the game you may actually randomly select the starting player. Then immediately check whether this book will be activated. First, book action is the action on the scenario card or the chapter card and the book will be activated only if the cubes from previous rounds have been already placed on the game board tile. So in this example the book would be activated at the start of the third round. Later in the game it would be activated at the start of this sixth round and then at the start of the final round. Remember in a four player game you would only use seven cubes so the book would not be activated at the start of the first round, but it would be activated at the start of the second round. And so on and so forth. If the book would be activated, you can take the book action. If there are any resources with red numbers, you have to pay those resources. If there are any resources or victory points with black numbers, you would gain those resources. You can only perform that book action one time. Then in the second step, as this symbol indicates, you will produce. Based on the position of your production marker on this production board, you will produce water and some victory points. To do that, you have to pay some energy. In this example, white player, as these pipes indicate, white player has to pay two energy and then the white player can gain three water and one victory point. If the white production marker would be over here, they would still have to pay only 2 energy, but they will generate 4 water and 1 victory point. If you don't have that much energy or you don't want to spend that much energy, you can always produce at any lower level. So white player could use just 1 energy and generate 3 water. Again, you can only do this one time even if you would have more energy. Then in the third and final step of this phase, you will reveal two cards from your navigation deck and the lower number indicates how many project cards or energy you can generate. That's what this symbology means over here. In this case it can be either two energy or two new project cards. You may not split the number between one project card and one energy. 
then you can place the lower value card to the discard pile. Now, the higher value card will be used in the next phase, the moment phase. The moment you have to draw the card from your navigation deck and the deck is empty, reshuffle your discard pile, create the new draw deck and draw to as many cards as you need. The second phase, movement phase, is performed in player order, starting with the first player and then continuing in a clockwise direction. It also has three steps, and in the first step you will move your ship. First calculate your number of movement points. The base number is determined from the card, from the navigation card, which you kept from the previous phase. Then you can use this solar panel. You either take one additional movement point or two energy immediately. If I would decide to use this movement point, it would be 3 plus 1, 4. Later in the game, if you upgrade your ship over here, you get additional movement points. Each arrow is one point. And certain project cards can also give you additional movement points. You can move your ship in any direction you want. Moving from one space to another costs one movement point. These spaces are cities and moving into the city and out of the city also costs one movement point. There are specific spaces with two arrows and over here with three arrows. Moving into this space would cost two movement points. Moving into this space would cost three movement points. Anytime you move on this kind of space, it is called the find. Immediately take the reward shown on that space. In this example, it would be two project cards. And you can only take this reward once per turn. Those rewards are permanent, so even if other player takes that reward during their turn, you can still take the same reward during your turn. You don't have to use all your movement points. In fact, on your turn you don't even have to move at all. You must always end your move in a city. Cities are these kind of tiles with clouds above them and they are separated, so this is one city, this is another city, this is another city and so on and so forth. So you must always end your movement in a city. It doesn't matter which space of the city it is. In fact, Multiple players may end their movement in the same city, obviously on a different space. You can move through the ships of other players, but you may never end your movement on the same space. After you end your movement, and remember it has to be in a city, if you are in a city where you don't have your marker yet, you may fight the cloud militia. If your combat value is equal or higher than the combat value of the city, you win the combat and you gain the reward. That combat value applies to all spaces of the city, regardless of where you end your movement. The combat value of your ship is determined by these upgrades of your airship. So at the start of the game, your basic combat value is zero. Then each upgrade will give you one permanent combat value. Then you may gain combat value from the project cards you have built already. And as this symbology indicates, to gain more combat value, you can draw additional navigation cards. The first one always costs one energy and the combat value you gain is equal to the value of the card. For each additional card you draw, you either have to pay two energy or three victory points. You can even get below zero victory points when you do this. Again, the value of the card you would draw adds that many points to your combat value. So in this example, it would be one, two, three, four, five. If your combat value is equal or higher than the combat value of the city, you win the combat and you gain the reward. If you don't win the combat, there is no penalty, nothing happens, you simply don't get that reward. At the end of the combat, discard any navigation cards drawn, then take the leftmost marker from your airship board, and place it on the city where your ship is currently located. That means you will not be able to perform combat in that city any longer. Even if you lost that combat the first time you got there, or even if you didn't perform the combat, if there is your cube in a city, you may not perform combat there. When you place the cube from your airship board with the bonus, immediately take the bonus. The third phase is the action phase and players will take actions on the city board. Starting with the first player in a player order, 
and for the sake of explanation let's say we have more players in the game, the first player will have a chance to either collect resources, build, and if you use the B side of the city board, also plant a new growth tile. The active player makes a choice and then all other players in a clockwise direction will have a chance to follow and take the same action. After that, all the drones will be returned back to the loading dock and then the next player in a clockwise direction will become the active player and that player will make a choice, again it can be collecting resources, building or planting. The player can take the same action as the previous player or any other action and then, starting with this active player, all other players in a clockwise direction can follow and perform the same action. The play continues until all players become active players one time and after that the action phase will be over. When you decide to collect resources, take your drone, choose one of these three sectors and place your drone in one of the resource spaces in that sector. Now other players in a clockwise direction will place their drones in one of the still empty spaces in the same sector, they may not choose the other sectors and after all players place their drones proceed to the next step. Current active player, it was white in our example, will take the top card from the sleeve from the same sector and now all players will gain resources based on their chosen type. In this example white player would take water and they would take three water, blue player chose metal, they would get one metal and the purple player chose the project cards and they would gain one project card. In addition this one metal also has this very small wrench icon and this one card has a one small card icon and these small icons indicate additional bonuses that these players will get. The player who receives this small card bonus action may choose one of their navigation cards in the discard pile and completely remove it from the game. When you gain that wrench icon you can either gain one resource for free, that is either one energy, one water, one metal or one card, or you can build one of the upgrades on your ship. For that upgrade you have to pay the price indicated on the upgrade tile. By the way, you may have noticed that the number of resources you can gain from the card corresponds to the size of the same colored areas on the card. Over here there is a huge water area, so the card provides a lot of water resources, there are solar panels here, so there's a decent amount of energy here, and so on and so forth. Now, the active player takes that card and places the card in their discard pile. If there is a growth bonus over here, take that growth bonus immediately. In this example it is one growth tile, so take the bag, randomly choose the tile from the bag and place it in front of you. If you would gain a card with three tiles, you would draw three tiles. If you would play the first or second chapter or first scenario, these growth tiles are not used. In that case, instead of the growth tile, simply gain one water. In this case you would gain three waters. The city card you gain becomes part of your navigation deck. When the active player chooses the build action, that player may take this action twice, all other players may take this action one time. With the build action you can either build one of the upgrades on your ship or one of your project cards. The symbol for the build action looks like this and the wrench symbol represents building the upgrade or one of the project cards. The other symbol indicates that if you don't build an upgrade or a project card, you can simply take one of the resources. Since the active player may perform the build action twice, they may take a resource with the first action and then use that resource for a build during the second action. Then, when you decide to build an upgrade, you have to choose one of the upgrades on your ship and you always have to choose the cheapest available upgrade from the chosen type. Even if you have more resources, you may not choose the upgrade of the higher tier if you don't have the previous upgrade built. After choosing the upgrade tile, let's say this one, pay the resources and flip the upgraded tile to the other side. Don't score the victory points now, they will be scored at the end of the game. 
When you build the project card, choose one of the cards from your hand, then pay the cost shown in the top left hand corner, in this example it is three water drops, and when you have to pay a project card, simply place it in a discard pile, and then place the card you built under your airship in the section with the same color. Project cards either give you the permanent bonuses or immediate bonuses marked with this flash symbol, and when you gain this effect, increase your production, so move your production marker one step forward. If you cross the line over here, you will get two water drops. In this example, the player who passes this line would gain two project cards immediately. In this example, you would gain three water drops. You will also score victory points for all your project cards at the end of the game. When the active player chooses this plant new growth style action, that player may take that action, all other players may only take one build action or take one resource instead. When planting the tiles, you may plant as many tiles from your personal supply as you can. The minimum number of tiles are two tiles as shown by these symbols over here, and when you build these upgrades, each one will give you additional symbol, so in this example I will be able to plant three tiles. From each tile you plant, gain the rewards immediately, over here it would be two victory points, here you can gain four energy or two new growth tiles, however these new ones cannot be planted this turn. With this one, again you have a choice of one of the resource types, over here you can either take one metal or take a build action or one resource instead, and you can gain these rewards in any order you want. Then. If you gain the reward from this type of dry tile, that tile is placed back into the bag. These tiles are called wilted tiles, and you can tell it's a wilted tile based on its bag. When you plant these green tiles, they are actually placed on the game boards. When placing the tile on the game board, you must place it on any empty spaces, not the city spaces and the empty space must be either next to your airship or it must be connected to your airship through other green tiles. If you cover this find tile, take that reward immediately and after that, that reward will no longer be available. Moving to the space always costs one movement point, even if you cover the find space with higher movement costs, it will always remain one movement point. Story cards and scenario cards work in the same way. When you play the scenario and when the book is activated for the first time, each player will take one mission card and then this scenario card will be flipped over. Later in the game, when the book action is activated, each player may perform this action once. When you play the first chapter of the campaign, only this book action will be available during the game and then at the end of the game, read the instructions on the back side of the card. When playing the second chapter, the first time the book action is activated, you have to flip the card to the back side, read the instructions, and based on the outcome, you will add additional chapter cards to your game. When the book action will be activated next time, this will be the action available to all players, then, as stated over here, flip the card and read the instructions again, and so on and so forth. During the campaign, story cards will introduce these legacy tiles and you will find all the instructions either on the story card or in the rulebook. Apart from chapter 1, players will start the game with one mission card and they can gain more mission cards over the course of the game. Each card has two missions and you can find their descriptions in the rulebook and when you gain a new mission card, you may not have two cards next to each other, you must always cover one of those missions with the new card, or you can cover one of the missions on the new card with the old card. So, when you have two mission cards, you may only score three missions at the end of the game. Similarly, when you gain another mission card, again, one of those missions must be covered. However, you are not allowed to have two missions of the same type. So, in this example, I might do it like this, and with that I would have four missions, each one is a different mission. At the end of the game you will score the victory points based on how you fulfill the conditions on those mission cards. If you draw a mission card and you already have both of the missions from that new card, 
return the card to the bottom of the mission deck and draw the new one. At the end of the last round, so at the end of the round when you place the last cube from your airship on the game board, as this symbol indicates, the game will be over. Follow the sequence shown on the airship board. So first of all, produce normally as if you would during the production phase. So that means based on the position of your production marker, you can spend some energy and produce water or gain victory points or both, or you can also do it for any lower level. Then you may perform two final build actions or take a resource, but that doesn't really make sense at the end of the game. And then count up your victory points. You will get the victory points from your missions. Count all the victory points from the project cards you've built over the course of the game. Gain the victory points from the highest upgrade tile from each type. In this example, I would only score six victory points, not one plus three plus six, only the highest number. Over here, it will be only one victory point, And in this case, it will be four victory points. All the remaining resources have no value. Then the player with the most points is the winner. And in case of a tie, all tied players perform one final combat, calculate your combat value, and you can still draw additional navigation cards, but you may only spend energy to draw new cards. You may not spend victory points. Then the player with the highest combat value wins the tie. And if players are still tied, then they share the victory. So that's how you play Cloud Age. If you have any questions or comments, please put them into the comment sections below. I'll be happy to answer your questions. If you like the series, please subscribe. You can even support the channel on the Patreon page. My name is Branislav Berec. You've been watching Game in a Nutshell and hope to see you next time.